Huskies and generations of American crews and Seattle-based crews. All right, we've got another race going down for you. We've got some eights. Eights racing, so exciting, such big roads, such, such big boats, so much energy. Um, we're right now in the middle of the men's U17 eights. Uh, lane one is Sammamish. Lane two, Rose City. Lane three, Green Lake. Lane four, Sammamish. Lane five, Mount Baker. And lane six, Eugene. Let's see what's popping. Looks like we've got a pretty tight race for first so far. Goodness gracious. Yeah, we sure do. And this is a Nationals qualifying event. So we do want to make note that the top four spots are everything in this race. So very, very important for these crews to try to punch a ticket to Sarasota again in the top four spots here. And right now, if we are looking at this correctly, I am looking at lane three, Green Lake. Yeah. And lane five, Mount Baker. So the race right mm -hmm. now for first is Bow Ball to Bow Ball, Green Lake Crew, and Mount Baker. Sandwiched in between is Sammamish. So Sammamish the sandwich right in between Green Lake and Mount Baker. But followed uh, maybe two seats down, three seats down, but it's changing constantly here by Rose City. Yeah, I think that Eugene up there uh, at the top in lane six might have something to say too. Because um, they're right now in fifth and uh, it looks like they're falling back though. You know, if, if I were in their position, I would put everything on the line right now to get that fourth place position as early as you can just so that you can hold on to that confidence. I think Rose City... Um, is in lane two there. Yep, I think that they're confident in that fourth place position presently. And I think that the, the first place uh, race has maybe been a little bit more clearly established. I think that we might have a clear first place winner right now. Yeah, in Green Lake. Green Lake looks strong and they're up by about four seats. Yeah, that's right. And again, this is where the fitness is going to start to matter too, because as Green Lake crew starts to push away, we're going to have to see if Mount Baker is actually going to counter or are they going to bring the rate up. If this coxswain is smart, we will see if they either start to make a move at the thousand and then start to bring the rate up just a little bit. They may have to go for an early sprint again, unless they just want to punch their ticket and get that uh, get that ticket to Sarasota. But this is a race for placings and for medals here. So very, very important. I think these crews are gonna pull some aces out and throw them on the table. Because as we speak, we are watching this Green Lake crew potentially be a little bit nervous they're at fading. the charge. Yeah, they're fading. Well, potentially a little bit nervous, I think, at the charge that Mount Baker is starting to make. So these crews are starting to counter each other and start to bring yeah. the rates up. And I'm going to give those to you in just a moment here. Green Lake's been riding high with the Four. fastest stroke rate uh, pretty much from the start. And I sense that that is going to be taxing. Mount Baker has kept a lower stroke rate, looks closer to 34, um, and has just been a little bit more calm. You see some wild things happening in the Green Lake boat. These are some very excitable athletes right now, and they're starting to get a little bit asynchronous, and I think it's affecting their boat speed. I think if Mount Baker holds steady in this last 500 meters and brings it up consistently, they might be able to take some swings at Green Lake. I think Green Lake uh, might have just gone out too fast and too furious. Well, you know, it's hard to say. Is this part of their race plan or is this a counter move? Because right now they're walking away again. They are, yeah. From uh, Mount Baker on the outside. So Green Lake crew at a rate 40 as we come into the red buoys. Very, very exciting. The Mount Baker crew is trying to counter. They have just brought their rate up again. So I'm going to give that to you. They're at a 37 now and charging. Dang. So we're going to have to see if Mount Baker can squeeze up on Green Lake here, and they may be able to do it. If they have enough water, yeah. Green Lake may be able to hold them off, but we're seeing the rates come up. They are throwing punches back and forth right now. However, I don't know if Mount Baker has enough water to get back on Green Lake here. I'm not sure. Yeah, just not enough real estate, I think. In the meantime, I saw a fun race getting built up for the fourth spot. I think that the fourth place position might be secure now. Um, I want to say that that is... There we go. Lanes three. 
Lane five and lane four are our top three finishers. And here we go for that fourth place position for Sarasota. Is it going to be lane two or lane six? So that is Rose City or and Eugene. Eugene. Yeah. What a battle we have here. Look at Eugene on the outside. Dad Zoo. That is too close wow. to call. That was really close. That might have been a photo finish, but I think, yeah, I think it might have been. So hard to say from our angle lane. here at the finish line. It's very oh, deceiving. Oh, yeah, it's tough. I don't want to be inaccurate. All of you folks playing along at home, uh, I'm sure that you value accuracy in our calls. So I'm not going to say anything until I'm sure of it henceforth. That is my commitment to you. Um, but wow, that was exciting. Um, when you see two boats cross the line like that with a national um, opportunity to race at the championships down in Florida on the line, uh, it, it's everything. And so I'm sure that hearts are in throats right now. They're waiting for the results. We're waiting for the results. And um, just so much joy and excitement out here today. Um, but these are months of work that have gone into each of these races, uh, each of these athletes making tremendous sacrifices day in and day out. Um, the, the parental influence too, uh, parents, you know, saving up money to...